Okay. I want to talk a little bit about... I always talk about this bar back here in the back, back here. Oh, right there. And how it's raising up the back of my pan. Which is, in effect, raising up my level surface on the back end and not the front end. And that is because those attachments are locked into that bar going across there and this cantilevers off the end of it. At this end, it's, it sags. No matter how tight I get that down there, I can't get this end to go any higher. So an example, I, I got it pretty tight and I'm flexing on it. Let's see if I can, I'm flexing on it. And as I flex, you can see the bar is actually bending. So it's tight, but it's not right. So the four bolts on the corners are what you would loosen and retighten on all, all of these. These bolts right here on the corners, and down there, are what you would loosen. Raise this up as high as you can on this end, tighten that up, or raise it up to where it's level with the back of it. And I have it all the way. I, I could I could go in here and cut bigger holes in these and, and tilt it more maybe. Maybe, but that being said, you can only go so much before your inside square metal is not, it's twisted. And I'm, so I'm good right now. I, I can't go any further. But what I have and why I have that bar in the back is I always reference it to the water level and that's not right because the floor could not be level and that could be all that. But here's where you really have to reference it. And this is why the Z, the torch height controller would really come in handy for this machine. And I can't wait till it comes out. I'm first in when they get it ready. I, I'll purchase it. I'll do whatever I need to do. But I need to get the torch height controller. I may even need to buy one before they get theirs ready at JD Garage. I'm sorry. When I say they, I mean JD's Garage. And that is who I uh, bought the design off of. You know, I, I 3D printed that. That wasn't theirs. But I bought the design off of them. And this is great. But my tolerances, my 3D printed parts that I printed, I purchased from them and I printed I've made some small modifications and they don't allow me to get this end of the table to the same height as that end of the table. And I'm going to show you, this is as far as it'll go right now. I got it as high as I can go. And this is actually touching. I'll try to scrape a little bit so you can hear it. You can, you can see it's moving that blade a little bit. So I'll wait. So I'm not going to raise it up. I'm not going to do a Z height touch off here. I'm just going to start going back. And, and you can, can see, I'm going to stop real quick. If my thumb wasn't in the way. You can see where it scraped as it left right there. So it was scraping a little bit. Not good for my tip, obviously, but I'm going to keep going back. Okay, we're about halfway back. And I'm going to come back here. Uh, I really need a feeler gauge or something. I don't have a feeler gauge, but let me try and find a flat screwdriver. Just to, just to give you an idea. That's the... That's the the thickness of the screwdriver. Not, not helpful, but something. So, it starts to touch right there. So, from this side, I'm that high up right now. So, that's a lot. That's a. That's a, not quite a quarter inch. Uh, you know, three sixteenths maybe. Three sixteenths. Just gonna call it that right now. Just keep going. It's still raising. I'm on the back now. So it's gonna be hard to reach back here to show you this, but that is definitely uh, a little over a quarter inch. Might be five sixteenths. I wouldn't even have a feeler gauge that high. So you can see that from front to back, I keep putting my thumb in front of the camera, sorry. From front to back, I have a difference of 5 sixteenths, and that's with that quarter inch piece of steel raising the back of the waterbed up. I would have to raise that back of the waterbed up at least another quarter inch. At least. Because I was touching up in the front. So I don't, it wasn't drastic, but it was touching. So a quarter inch difference, let's just call it, from front to back. And that, that's bad when you're trying to cut 
an outline. It's not so bad when you're trying to cut little bits here and there because it does do a, I do have the Z height touch off with this here. So every time it goes in and does another cut, it does a cut right here, it goes in and touches down and does the cut. Then it comes over here and it goes down and it touches off and it makes the cut. And then it goes back here and it touches down and it goes around and makes the cut. So it's always checking where zero is on every new cut. So this is the, this is the design I had up from last time. I haven't changed it yet because I've been trying to clean things up a little bit. And every time it goes down, every place it goes down where you see the green jumping to another spot, it goes down and touches off and does a cut. And that chili, per se, is what, you know, that's uh, it's about an inch or two inches long. And between there and there, there's not much height difference. It's The difference is between the whole front and back. And where that comes into play is on the outlines, almost always on the outlines. It just destroys me. Um, from the top of this pot to the bottom of this pot would be, in this case, from the front to the back. And, and in this case, that pot was only... Uh, Oh, what did I do with that chili pot? I kept it. I don't know where I threw it. I had a bad one that I cut, and that's why I kept it. Honestly, I don't know where it is right now. I could show you. It's, it's only about eight inches tall, maybe. So it's it's not even covering. That's about six inches there, so maybe from there to there. It's about half of that quarter inch, or <coughs> a third of that quarter inch difference, where it's lifting here. And back here, or, or it touches down up here if we're lucky, and then back here it's way above the metal and can still cut. Maybe it went from what was one millimeter above the metal here to back here, uh, let's see, a, a third of a quarter inch, probably another millimeter high back there. So it changed a millimeter over the course of that front to back on that pot. But this saw is one of my goals to cut and I have I have a lot of these big saw blades like this I got some back here in the back back here so that's that's my goal I, I did one I did do one uh, and I'm gonna tell you I stole somebody else's design but I'm gonna grab it really quick be right back all right so I did one I did this one and it worked. It's, it's not as big. You can see it's close, but it's not as big. And it would touch down and do each letter perfectly fine. But this whole inner part right here, this whole inner part, it touched down one time and did the whole outline. Inner, inner parts it did right in here, it touched down and did those individually. So those were fine. And, and even that was fine because it's an inner part. But this outline, this part here, that goes in here and cuts this big piece, that was, uh, it was about eight inches. But, and so, you know, that's like the chili pot. It kind of worked. It depends on where it sets down at. If it sets down in a high spot, it's okay. If it sets down in a low spot and then has to cut around to a high spot, then you're dragging your tip of your plasma cutter and basically uh, lifting, you're basically lifting this part of the head up as you're cutting and you're dragging so potential to move your your material potential to wear down the tip of your plasma cutter really bad and you don't necessarily want to be touching the metal when you're when you're cutting you want to be a slight bit above it uh it depends on the thickness of the metal but about a millimeter or less above the metal at all times that is where a torch height controller comes in handy that is where it saves the day if my bed is perfectly level that's not an issue most of the time. Where it still becomes an issue is if you're using thin metal, like I was doing with the fish design the other day. Uh, you know, I got some back here. This stuff, this stuff, how thin it is, you know, it's, it's nothing. Then the metal starts to warp, you know? And as the metal's warping, it's changing height. So unless you get it all locked down, you're going to get that there too. And that's why it's so important to have a torch height controller. But I am going to try and raise the back of the table another quarter inch until I can get that. So that's what I'm working on today. All right, I didn't quite get another quarter inch out of it, but I did get a little more. I'm going to see where it is before I add that entire quarter inch. So here you can see now, I'm just barely touching up front. 
and we go up until it's not touching. Okay, I went up two. Let me go up one instead. Yeah, okay, so right there. I went up one thousandth of a millimeter, one hundredth of a millimeter. I don't know what it is, one thousandth of a millimeter. So I'm just above it. And I don't think you can even see light between it. Yeah, you can't. It's so tight. Okay, so it's tight enough. But let's go back now. Oh, I gotta turn. I gotta turn off the one millimeter at a time, or one point one millimeter at a time. So we're gonna go to the midpoint like we did last time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add more. What I do with that screwdriver? Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> Not much. I I can't get the screwdriver to go under without causing it to raise up. So, okay, that's a little better. Let's go back a little more. And here's where we were about last time. Oh, wait, I'm not even pointing. It's better. I just need about another, another eighth of an inch would do the job, I think. Um, so, I went to a black bar instead of the silver bar. I thought, you know, if I went that whole another silver bar like that, it'd be too much, which is true, because I only went a little bit more. So I just need to find something a little bit taller than that, and I think I'm good. We're going to try to find something else. Okay, I added another eighth inch of metal on top of that black bar. We're at our papers just right there. Got that adjusted now. We're going to go ahead and go back. Got to take it out of the continuous mode. Okay. Same as before. We're going to go to the midpoint and see where we are. Okay, so we got a little bit of drag right in there, just a little bit. But this is uh, this is coated, so I'm not sure if they tried to paint it or what, but we've got a little bit there. Very little. I can't get underneath it there. Just a little bit of drag right there, not much, not much at all. I don't see the thing going up and down, and this is at the very back here. I'm not getting underneath it. Let me turn the paper. I can't get a screwdriver underneath it. Make sure I can still get a piece of paper underneath it. Oh yeah, easy. No drag at all, and hardly any play. So it is not perfect across the whole thing, because right about there, oops, get the screwdriver out of the way. It's tight, it's not really, I can still slide the paper underneath. Here's where I thought it was dragging a little bit. Let me try that again. Yeah, I can't get the paper underneath there without pushing it hard, but it is going and it is sliding. But I am pushing a little harder. So it's going. And this, this saw blade, whatever it was, had some kind of coating on it. Yeah, same down there. Okay, so I think I got it front to back level with my current settings on those back bolts. I had to add some more metal in there and that means we're higher in the back, uh, and which means it's closer to the frame there, which just fits. Now, left to right, I think I've always been pretty accurate. Uh, we could check that. Of course, with this piece of metal being round like it is, I'd have to check it in the middle here. Get my piece of paper again. That's a little bit higher there, not much, a little bit. On this side. Go to the other side. Oops, sorry. Dragging just a hair. Oh, okay, did you see that? I don't know if you saw that. Let me get close up. Uh, I can't do it now because I'm off of it. It's going to hit when it comes over to the other side. Did you see it jump up a little bit? So... Oh, that's as far as I can go. I'm knocking my plasma cut over. I need to move my plasma cutter over just a little more because I can't get the last three inches of my table. So yeah, we're dragging. I don't know if you can see the little drag mark. We're dragging, but not much. Not much. Let's raise the Z height up and see how much the arm cantilevers back down. We'll do it by a millimeter at a time. Ready? One. Two. Yeah, it, it did go down. On the second one, it still went down, even on two. So it's at least a millimeter difference from left to right. Um, yeah, I, I could level that too. I need to. Uh, it's gonna be harder to level. I guess I could just put a, a bar across there somewhere. You put a bar across there somewhere. But this is much better than it was, so I'm gonna leave it right here now. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that JD uh, 
in the garage is working on that torch height controller to get us all leveled out wherever we are. Then the leveling won't matter as much. All right, that's all for today. Just wanted to get that leveled out and show you what I had going on. That may be part of why my circles aren't perfect circles is because I'm dragging in some spots and not in others.